All right, recording. Five seconds. Okay. Hey, it's the Hidden Object Guru here, joined by... The Gun Wrangler. And we're here to clean up a, uh, a place where they had an uprising against an evil corporation. Possibly the one that employs us. Almost certainly the one that employs us. Uh, I think we need a new <coughs> device to deal with spray paint on the wall, but uh, we'll get there. Yeah, we definitely need a new device. All right, so I think first things first, we've really got to find uh, where we get our buckets and uh, stuff to dump, because, oof, this place is a mess. Yeah. Uh, but we're not just here to play this or clean up de detail, of course. We are also here to chat, because I finally obeyed my instructions and started watching The Expanse. Uh, after such a long time. I know, I made you wait for that. Oh, you made uh, me wait like two and a half years, man. Just, it's ridiculous. I, I, don't it dis I don't disagree, but here we are. I found the buckets, so there we go. And the I bins. found our, uh, our box of... Oh no, you found our box of uh, stuff. Okay, well, yeah. Incinerator next. Uh, I, uh, I was playing a solo game and I decided, oh, I'm going to do the smart thing and I'm just going to pick everything up first and worry about the bloodstains later. Uh, and that is how I find out that there is an infinite amount of blood on the ground. So whenever you touch anything, you start dropping footprints and there is no limit to the amount of footprints you can drop. To the point where it's like, so everything was coated with blood that had to be like hit... 50 times with a mop before that blood stain would disappear. It was uh, very embarrassing. So my lesson to you is always clean the blood stains first. Worry about everything else later. Uh, but that's that's neither here nor there. The Expanse. What is it? Okay. It's near future goodness. Okay. It's, it's set in a world that's unsurprisingly not far off. Um about 120 years in the future where the solar system is basically broken up into three major factions. There's Earth, which now has a population of about 14 billion people and is essentially a utopian dystopia. Yeah. There's, you know, there's a lot of power and influence, but the average citizen gets by on a basic income and doesn't have to work if they don't want to. So, I mean, kind of novel right there. Yeah. Um, there's Mars, which is a very militaristic and, you know... Uh, Basically, uh, let's, let's look at it this way. Remember that time on Archer that uh, the guys wanted to t uh, colonize Mars to save the human race and run it as a creepy military dictatorship? It's basically huh. what if their plan had succeeded. Well, minus the weird sexual component. Oh, but... yes, of course. <laughs> That's but... the show Archer. And it's not yes. this show. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, there's there's a lot of characters to keep track of. I'm one episode in, and I'm already startled by how many characters there are to keep track of. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Okay, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> there um, are. Well, no, and I mean, if they were all hanging out with each other, it would be one thing, and I think it would be easier to keep track of, but you've got you've got Tom Jane and his new partner and his captain, and then the various people around uh, the space... Um, what's the station called? Ceres Station? Ceres Station, yes. Ceres Station, okay. Uh, all the various people around Ceres Station, so you got them. Then you've got uh, our other main character, the pilot... And his uh, crew of th four, spoiler alert, three other surviving people of his icebreaker ship. No. Which, wrong number. Wow. No, there weren't three other people? Okay. Naomi. Yeah. Amos. Okay. Alex. Right. Shed. Oh, okay. You're right. I forgot. I forgot one. But yeah, so yep. it's him and his four other characters, right? So those are the two main groups. And then we're following Shora Agdalashu, uh, yep. who's who's having adventures on Earth. And we haven't met uh, anybody except for her husband, Billy Fish. But uh, I'm sure there will be more characters in that storyline, too. Uh, no, we met her boss. Oh, 
not in the first episode. Yes, we did. Oh, you're right. You did because when we she went down into the place, the there was one other guy there. You're right. You're right. We did. Yeah, there was the guy who was like, "Yeah, maybe you could stop torturing people for a bit." (laughs) (laughs) And she's like, "Mm, "No, no, no." I think torture is what's get the job done when we're dealing with these spacers. So yeah, um, lots of big ideas in this one. The uh, the all of the people who are a lower class because they are born in low gravity. And only the people who are um, only people who the government likes who are born in low gravity get the artificial growth hormones to make them not look like creepy monsters. Oh, uh, no, that's something that's, similar that's but something different. It, okay. <laughs> um, so the idea is the belters, which are yeah. people who are neither on Earth nor Mars. Yeah, the guys the who live belt. in the asteroid belt where they mine resources. Yeah. Yes, are dead poor. Yeah. And so basically picture, I mean, and the thing is it's hard, it's impossible not to think of this watching it. So I'm just going to say it picture Mars in total recall. That's exactly how they live. Yeah. I mean, it is, I mean, I don't, I know it's reductive to use that comparison, but visually you understand why I use that comparison, right? Yes, I totally do. Okay. And where is our incinerator? I have no idea. I've just been constant. Maybe it's downstairs. I'm going to check the staircase. Uh, and we've got to find a tool somewhere to deal with the, uh, to deal with the graffiti. Uh, oh, found it. All right, good. Seems like a Ew. long way to go. Nice. Or it's a laser. Or it's some kind of horrifying laser. Uh, use the laser on corpses. See if that works. Nope. That looks exactly like a Ghostbusters laser. That's a Terminator. You're shooting at a Terminator. Yep. Nope, sorry. I just no, need it's to. Fine. Uh, you turned the Terminator into slag. You didn't kill me. It turns the humans into balls of sludge that are easier to transport. So, moral victory. Yep. Incinerator. <laughs> Hopefully, more stuff, too. There we go. I seem to be starting an awful lot of fires. Stop doing that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there, there are these shockingly poor people. Who are stuck yeah. there? Who constantly have to work just to have enough money to keep getting water and air? Yeah, which and yikes. That's kind of a problem, and oh, yeah, so some of them end up as well in the books. Um, it's um, the uh, longbone characters that you consider creepy. Yeah, are actually the norm. Oh really? Oh. What have you done? It's possible I put a, thinking I was supposed to destroy a barrel, it's possible I put a barrel of gasoline inside a, uh, inside an incinerator. That okay. might have happened. I will bring you down a, uh, what do you call it? A bucket. Uh, a bucket. So we can start dealing with the mess I just made. Sorry about that. Of yourself. Of myself. There's really got to be a I'm second putting your parts into the incinerator. incinerator. I, I hope you're happy. I appreciate that. I really, really do appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, but they yeah. couldn't afford to do that for the show, obviously. Well, I think it was more in terms of there's only so many people with uh, those sorts of proportions, and they found Our all two of disease them. Or whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Uh, well, I mean, you can do it with special effects. You can do it with CGI, but it's not cheap. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that that's actually very interesting to me. So, just the first episode, here's what I've got. There's uh, Mars is on the move. Mar- uh, at least we think Mars is on the move specifically trying to cut off the uh, the ice supply to Ceres Station to starve them so they can take out over Ceres. And we're getting the sense that Ceres is, what, the main, uh, the, the main hub for all of the minerals that are being mined in space that need to get to Earth? Yep, it's the, essentially, it's the capital of the belt. Okay. The belt and so... is not organized politically, socially, really... Anywise, they have their own language, which is, by the way, badass. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the scene where he's talking to the uh, the prostitute, and we're hearing it entirely in the weird monster language. Beltalauda. Beltalauda. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was great. That's a really good scene, and, and you, you can follow it. I was surprised. Yeah, and then it's also very heavy on gestures. Yes. Which is also a nice choice, just for world building. 
Yep. Uh, and well, then, of course, we've sense, got... because these people spend the bulk of their lives in spacesuits. Yeah, of course. They, they can't talk largely. Uh, what I thought was very nice, right, was... Um, oh, my God. You want to talk about... I, I had no idea they were going to blow up that ship in the first episode. Whew. Uh, you want to talk about a good bit of misdirection, starting the episode with the people on the... Uh, with the lady on that ship, on the, the derelict ship. And then we think, oh, so they're going to save her. Nope. 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 It's... Uh, it's treacherous people. But the real question is, we hear this interesting statement, which is that uh, Mars has, uh, it, only Mars, for example, would have um, cloaking technology. Yes. Right? But at the same time, we have uh, Belter separatists, freedom fighters, who seem to have the cloaking technology tech as well, getting tortured on Earth. So what exactly does that mean? Um... Yes, basically, uh, uh, the um, there's a belter who's caught at one point, and they basically say, um, we caught you trying to smuggle something. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about that while you hang Get here on hooks. Horribly tortured. <laughs> and, yeah, and are horribly tortured. <laughs> because a, Christian a uh, Arifala is stone co- like a stone killer. She's great. She is... Uh, Quite possibly, quite easily, yeah, the best character in the series. All right, well, don't tell me any more about her. I'm one episode in. I can't wait to see where this is going. Well, uh, she, oh, like I can tell you without spoilers. Yeah, she is currently the Under Secretary General for the UN, which controls the Earth. Of course. And All right. Uh, so and she, I mean that that was clear from the episode. She's very high ranking. They're sending flivers to pick her up from her vacation house to, to oversee torture. So you know, like we, we get what her position is yeah. from the first episode, which is pretty boss. And she gets to show up wearing whatever she wants, which is also pretty boss. She just yep. keeps on that awesome dress and ma- at jewelry. And I'm like, yep, you run this place. You know, she's fantastic. And it's a great part for her who, you know, we've been seeing in television essentially forever, you know? Like, I've been watching her for so long, and it's great seeing her in a really central part, which I checked the uh, IMDb credits. Apparently, she sticks around, but I don't want spoilers, other than I know she sticks around. Uh, it's interesting because um, the it's so disparate. I mean, with the way normal television is structured, you'd be trying to look for, well, what are the connections between these characters? Because that's what television is built around. But because this is this... I hate to use the term because it's so, you know, such a terrible pun, expansive sci-fi. Yeah. I'm not guaranteed that there will be any connection to these characters. Like, there's no reason to believe that that, uh, that the exo of that ship, who everybody on a ship got killed, like, that could be her son because he's fled because she's the only character on Earth. But I have no reason to suspect it is simply because this is the kind of show where it's possible just no one has any direct connection to each other they're just yeah. all characters who are going to be moving around each other's orbits and i think that's very impressive and is a great way to kick things off do we just have some weirdo enter our game yes uh can that happen uh, apparently because i did not know that could happen i thought it was a two-player game well whatever if he wants to help all right i'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna judge him <laughs> or does we need it yes <laughs> Uh, we have made quite a mess of ourselves. We have to find start finding like key, door key codes because we are locked out of everything. Yeah. So yeah, um, really great special effects. Like the the show looks great. The oh that that scene where they have to go over to the derelict ship just so effectively handled, so creepy, so quiet. Oh, and I the, know. Um, the, them constantly doing shots with mini cameras inside the helmets. To like remind you of how claustrophobic being in a spacesuit is. To mm-hmm. find a way to do that visually, which so few shows do. So yeah, I was kind of blown away. That's like they want to make space feel like because we've got all of these people in a spaceship and the spaceships have gravity and they're relatively nice. They want us to be, you know, comf- essentially kind of comfortable. And then they step out in those friggin' spacesuits and oh my god, it's all a nightmare. This this is horrifying. Yeah, this is, it's, yeah. It's a horrible nightmare. And yeah, so I thought really effective at building the world, really effective at, uh, you know, setting up these characters. I can't wait to see what's next. Also, a uh, brief cameo by one Julian Richings as, uh, 
as a scumbag landlord that uh, Tom Jane threatens to throw into outer space. And there's also that dude, Jonathan Banks. Yeah, Jonathan Banks shows up as the uh, as the former XO who he replaced. No, he was Jonathan the CO. Banks oh, he was? Oh, you're right, because everybody this... else moved up. Yes, he was the, the captain and everybody else moved up. Because uh, yeah. he went space crazy. Well, he went regular crazy. He just happened to be in space. Yeah. Well, no, no. They made it clear that it was like... They made it very clear with the specific nature of his craziness that he went space crazy. That he yeah. had been away from Earth for too long. And uh, it had driven him mad. Uh, which apparently is a thing that happens. Uh, are we Are we going to be seeing him again? Or did he die on the ship? It really wasn't clear. Oh, he did. Oh, he did die in the ship. Okay. Because we saw him loading him onto a thing. And I'm like, did they get him a hospital shuttle? Or is this just showing us the consequences of space craziness? And I guess uh, they put him into, us... they, they sent him to sick bay, essentially. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that, that's the one thing I wasn't completely clear on. I figured we weren't going to see him again. He's got his own TV show. But uh, Jonathan Banks is one of my favorite actors. So yep. it was very happy to see him. The star of a little show called Wise Guy. I remember yep. uh, Wise Guy, one of maybe the best network television show ever made. I know that's debatable, but it, it's really hard to find a network drama better than Wise Guy in history. And uh, the wonderful thing about it is that uh, you get through the end of season two, I guess, and then like Jonathan Banks shows up for one episode. And I'm like, oh, it's my one of my favorite actors, uh, Jonathan Banks. On I'm, I, st- I I moved over to talking about Breaking Bad there, and that should have been clear. End of season yep. two of Breaking Bad, Jonathan Banks shows up in essentially a, he like says two words in his first appearance. I'm like, oh, Jonathan Banks shows up. That made me so happy. I love Jonathan Banks. And uh, it's weird. He would go on to become one of the most important characters in the franchise. Yep. To the point where he's the co-lead of the spinoff show. So way to go, Jonathan Banks. You're, getting the, you're now getting the career you always deserved. Yep. But yeah, uh, you were right about the pilot of that show. That is as amazing a pilot as you'll see. It really gets you on board fast. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the next episode and seeing how the story develops. Hey. Oh man, sp- you've got no... Uh, no, I have no idea. No, I have no idea. Uh, speaking of amazing pilots, can, can we talk about Counterpart? Yes. Oh That's my... That's another one I turned you on to. It's, yep. I stumbled on it on... Canadian Hulu, essentially. Yeah, it's a it's a service called Crave here in Canada, and it is essentially most of Hulu shows. Yeah, and and some other stuff. Oh my God, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that says it enough. Uh, so fo- first off, um, just run down with the premises. Um, essentially, uh, there's a hole between. Actually, it's kind of unclear. It's no one actually knows what happened, but at some point, either there was um, a whole cord into another dimension, and well, you know, it's an alternate reality, or the universe has doubled. They specifically, and, they specifically think, and as uh, I mean, uh, what do you call it? The, his boss? Is clear that nobody knows. Like nobody knows yes. for sure. But what they think happened is that through science someone was doing, or maybe it just happened, there was one universe until about 30 years ago. Yeah. And then 30 years ago, it it split in two. And there is a tunnel you can walk through in Berlin. And if you get to the other side of the tunnel, you're in the other dimension. Yeah. And And so it sort of, it parts ways from there, essentially. And it just, it goes some really interesting places. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, I didn't know based on the premise what I was going to get. And then it starts with, you know, Hitman spy show stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is a spy TV show. It's saying, it's essentially, what uh, the way I've uh, preceded to people is, wh- A, what if Fringe was a... Uh, was good. Had, well, no, had started at the fourth season. Which was, you know, when Fringe started to get good and interesting was the fourth season. So yeah. what if Fringe had started with the fourth season and it was a spy, an ongoing spy show, they you know, cared about character and such rather than a X-Files ripoff Case of the Week style TV show. Yeah. 
And that's what this show is. Like, that's exactly what it feels like. And, oh boy, is it is it worth it? I was blown away by this TV show. I know, I was too. I, and it, it was... It just came out of nowhere for me, because I, I had no idea this was coming. I knew, it, I knew J.K. Simmons was in it. That's all I knew about the show. That it was the J.K. Simmons show on Crave TV. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, Crave TV. And... Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Uh, what, I mean, there's so many incredible things in it. Like, uh, I, I almost don't know where to start. Uh, let's see. Well, no. Let's start at the most natural place. J.K. Simmons' performance. Yes. Both uh, as which, himself and himself. Yes. Both versions of J.K. Simmons in this are such... I mean, it's it's. they always say it's the biggest challenge, you know, playing two versions of yourself at the same time. And, you know, doing the split screen, playing both. I think we all remember Dead Rings. Yeah. Right? And I'm not saying this is going to overtake Dead Ringers as the best ever two versions of a guy performance. That being said, it might. (laughs) I would pet good money on it, actually. Well, yeah, I mean, it depends how long the show runs. But this is, I mean, he's incredible. The, the two versions of him being played here are just, they're such distinct characters, and he plays them so well, and he does the interactions between the two versions of himself so well. Like, I thought they were going to play it safe with the two versions and keep cutting between them or something like that, but they share a weirdly large amount of screen time in every episode. Yeah. Like, there's only been three episodes, and each one... They spend a meaningful amount of time interacting with each other, which mm-hmm. I guess they figured is what was going to separate this from all of the other shows like it, was they actually went there. Sorry, what is happening with the laser over here? I'm not sure, because that's some dude. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a weird thing to do, dude. How spoilery are we going to get with this? Cause... Well, I mean, we're only three episodes in. It's not like we can spoil the whole season. I think we can start by saying... If you have the ability to watch Counterpart, go and go watch, and watch it. You and owe it to yourself. Pause the, you, you owe it to yourself. Pause now, please. Come, and then come back, because we are nothing but spoilers. All right. Like, so. I, I want to I talk about a few things. Of specifically, course. what's your suspicion as to why Alternate Simmons became, like, a man-eating super assassin? Well, no, I mean, and I think that I think they make it clear in the in the third in the second and third episode, they kind of make it clear that all of these people, right? Uh, and I mean, maybe it's just too pat, but at some point after the split, you know, the that somebody, their people reach a decision point, right? And mm-hmm. whether they make and they make one decision one way and they make another decision the other way. And in, it's largely because of environment. Uh, but we'll get into that. But what happened was, so in our dimension, for example, the assassin never stopped playing the violin. And because she never stopped playing the violin, she had a life. She was able to, you know, turn it into a life. The, the version of her on the other side did give up the violin. And that sent her down the course to becoming a remorseless killing machine. Now, that was affected by, you know, the state of play in that universe, yeah. which we'll get there, uh, the specific decision she made to become a killing machine, but in the same way, we know it turned J.K. Simmons into a killing machine. His wife told him there were two dimensions. No, that I was not the point. I think that was part of it. No. Okay. I believe the... Um... The actual turning point was him finding out his wife knew the entire time. Oh, I see what you're saying. And didn't tell him for X amount of time. I see what you're saying. The fact that she ever kept it from him. Yes. Yeah, okay. And the fact that it's revealed in the third episode that, oh, hey, honey, um, so by the way, I've been working... At a senior level in the same company that employs you doing super secret awesome stuff. And I just haven't told you for a couple of years. Yeah. (sighs) You think that might turn him into... Yeah. Yeah, no. That might precipitate a divorce. That, that, well, it definitely... We know that that precipitated a divorce. 
Yeah. But, uh, and the question, and the funny part is, um, it was a little, I don't want to insult the writing much because I really love this show, okay? And this is not, I'm not going to be insulting this show. Yes. But one thing I will point out is, like, uh, one thing that really bothered me was, so his wife, uh, J.K., R. J.K. Simmons, his wife got run over by a car uh, three weeks ago when the show starts, and she's been in a coma since. Probably yeah. brain dead. Who knows what kind of technology they have in the other world. She might, she'll probably be back at some point. Right, well, they've was... actually made it clear that they have very advanced um, medical technology. Exactly. Because like... there's been a huge monster plague there. Yeah. Well, probably more than one monster plague. They and had the implication pandemics. is that it's kind of our fault. Yeah. Oh, that. Well, that's what the people in the other dimension seem to think, which is kind of nice. But uh, yeah. No, yeah, they've had uh, all of our rapid medical advances came from the other side, and that was a nice bit of world building. Came from the other side because this pandemic necessitated essentially, I think the subtext is getting rid of national boundaries and everybody putting everything aside and just working together to cure people and make sure humanity survives. Well, I noticed something interesting. Yeah. Um, when I was watching. It, like, I've watched the entire series between two and four times per episode. Just wow. because I've been I've been introducing it to people. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. It's good. It, and it, it I already can tell just by the one time I've watched each that this is going to, you know, hold up to, re- to repeat viewings. Like, you can tell. You actually... You will get more. You'll get more out of it. Just like... Um, it's like watching Shutter Island a second time. Yeah, there's so much more there. Yeah. Uh-oh. Is that All you? All right, I cannot be trusted with a laser gun. I was trying to destroy the, uh, the... <laughs> I was trying to destroy the graffiti, and I seem to have uh, destroyed some gas mains instead, so... Still that not sure problematic. how we're supposed to deal with that gra- graffiti, but we're working on it. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more to get out of the shows that I will see going forward. But what I think impresses me the most is just, uh, yes, there's some there's some writing things that bothers me, right? But just how great the performances are keep me from caring too much about it. Like, so uh, his wife is in a coma, right? And so, and then an assassin comes from another dimension to murder her while she's in a coma. And R.J.K. Simmons... Like, doesn't immediately think, well, obviously she's working for the same company I'm working for. And I'm like, and I'm not quite sure how he doesn't think that. Because their J.K. Simmons is like, they want to kill her to get back at me. And I'm like, no, that's, that is the least believable thing I've (laughs) ever heard. Do you know how much, and I mean, I I was going to say, before I even found out how much of a hassle it is, my thought was, do you know how much of a hassle it is to go from one dimension to another? They wouldn't go from one dimension or another to kill the ex-wife of a guy, or, or the, you know, he, he says dead, but the ex-wife of a guy they don't like. The amount well, of work that is, there's just, you don't believe that for a second. Well, here's and, the thing. We do know on both sides, she is a senior member at the company. Yes, but we don't uh, learn that until the third episode. I'm saying in the first episode, it is kind of ridiculous that J.K. Simmons, except our J.K. Simmons, hard to remember to do that, except for a second that she would have just, that someone would have, you know, leapt through time and space across dimensions just to annoy, you know, just to emotionally hurt J.K. Simmons. It's just, it's such a preposterous idea on its face well, I think that it, I'm glad it, that they got rid of it. They, they let us in on the secret just within two episodes. Well, the other thing is you, for instance, um, other J.K. Simmons yeah. actually never tells ours. Not yet. Yeah, not yet that they've broken up. So he's like, oh, no, wait, no. If I'm this super secret assassin on the other side, then yeah, okay, no, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And um, I, and it's interesting because he, he so wants to keep... Uh, you've, got this, you've got this level to it where you can tell that uh, other J.K. Simmons, you know, regrets how his marriage turned out. 
and is jealous of uh, our J.K. Simmons. And, and really bitter. So bitter. <laughs> and in a sense, had had fallen in love with the other version of his own wife who kept her J.K. Simmons in the dark and allowed him to just live, you know, a relatively content life. Yeah. He, he was obviously falling in love with that version of his own wife. So there's a lot going on with these two guys, and I'm loving it. And well, it's one of the all things, in his performance. One of the things I also picked up on, which, yeah. uh, again, it took like four watch-throughs. Yeah. Um, was the fact that in the on um, the other side, there's never more than four people on screen, and it's usually less. God, you're right, aren't you? Yeah. There's just yeah. never a crowd of people. There's no crowds. Yeah. The most of any crowded kind. time you see you see four and a half. You see four or when they're five. actually down in the uh, facility moving over. No, in the bar. You're right in the bar. That's it. That's the only time. That's, and any and, other and time, two of those four. guys are guys who are there to kill him. Exactly. But you look at it and. Yeah, it really has. And then you hear the line about, you know, their entire population being decimated by these plagues. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it really is that bad to the point where there are just no crowds anywhere. Yeah, think about it. You, they make a point of, in most scenes on our side, Yeah, there's going to be four Some people extras. or more. Yeah, there's going to be extras running around every time. And on that side... There's nobody there's nobody you yeah. even see them you see outside that same building in the heart of downtown berlin which is considerably more built up than our side yeah and you don't see and there's just nobody there yeah there's like two people that's it wow oh again that's just a great piece <laughs> of set direction right you know oh god no but everything about this show is so top-notch they're yeah. doing such an amazing job. Like the, it looks great. The performances again are fantastic. The performances are fantastic. It looks great, and it's again just such an interesting concept. Like it's so immediately compelling. Right, this world that they've built. You just you want to know all about the secrets of this world right away. So yeah, I was. This is a great pilot. Again, this is two shows now. It's just a stellar pilot. And this yeah, isn't even based on a book or anything. It's just some guy's TV show. The the Expanse is based, excuse me, on a book. Yeah, a series of books, right? A series of books, yes. Yeah. Um, but um, this is wholly original. I I let me double check that one. Okay. Um, but it's one of those grand pieces. I yeah. I, this is how pilots should be done. Yeah, it's just this giant, you know, ex uh, this uh, this huge open look into a world. Like where you just get this giant overview of the way things function in that world. Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty shocking. Like it's pretty shocking the kind of stuff they're able to get away with in that first episode. That being <laughs> said, um, uh, in order to get to the point where, what's her name? The Ga, the murderer can have time to interact in the second episode with her alternate self. They have to have, uh, basically, um, I don't want to be too mean about this. The writers are not able to come up with clever her things for her to do. So they make everybody in the cops and the spy organization kind of look like idiots for letting themselves get killed. Yeah. Like their, their goons are, they're terrible at this. They're, they're terrible. Like, literally, uh, like, you know you're dealing with an assassin who knows for a fact that you're going to be watching a person and your plan is sit in a car and stare at a door, hoping she bl blithely just walks into that building. Yeah. An unlocked car? And, yeah. And, but, by that same token, I would like to note that uh other jk simmons does point out the fact that you know he goes you guys are you guys are fucking housekeeping what are you what are you doing he does How this are like you two, so bad at this yeah he does this true. like two or three times 
Yeah, because apparently our side's uh, housekeeping sucks at their job is part of the overall narrative. Or are just corrupt because there are, we learned in episode three, that J.K. Simmons is pr- pretty damn sure that there's, you know, corrupt people on both sides. Yeah. And that it's possible. I mean, I don't know where the show's going, but they say that there is currently a uh, an inter internal war for control of the corporation. You know, who's yeah. in charge, essentially, of the world on that side, and essentially how they should be operating, which kind of leads to the suggestion that they would like to steal our Earth. I think it's one of those things, both sides are playing this zero-sum game where yeah. they trade information, because one of the things they talk about is, well, you know, they don't have cell phones. Yeah. Which is kind of amazing, in fact. <laughs> right? But yeah, they don't have cell phones. Whoever, whatever you know, number of people were required for cell phones to happen at a certain amount of time, those people died. And they never got cell phones. Or, you know, these people were busy devising the cure. Because yeah, it's mentioned explicitly for... a couple of times where it's yeah. like, yeah, it must be nice to have all this shit. Too bad yeah. we were, um, you know, Wiped staking out. off human extinction and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a, as they said, they stopped AIDS. You know, the reason there are they the the thing they give a shout out to is the reason we now have a treatment so people can indefinitely live with AIDS is because of the work these guys are doing. And the human genome. And they they and... did the human genome project and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 So and again, it's it's great stuff to ascribe to this deal because it makes it fit really nicely into our world. Because of, and simply because, I think anyone who was alive in the 90s uh, remembers when they announced the Human Genome Project, and then they were like, this is going to take us forever, it's a multi-decade attempt to figure out everything about humans, and then like, 12 years later, they just kind of put out a press release, oh, by the way, we're done. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we just finished that. Yeah, don't Remember worry, how we, we said this. that was going to take forever, and in sci-fi, that were, they were like... 200 years in the future, we've cracked the human genome and now the movie Gattaca can happen. Yeah, uh, we, we finished that like 12 years after we announced we were going to start it. And it did seem pretty quick for the way they were talking about it when it was announced. And of course, this show would suggest, well, yeah, that's because we had another dimension working on it too. Yeah. But or yeah. It, it was just a consequence. They just needed to get it done. So they just put in the work. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oof. But I, I also like the idea that... Um, uh, that a massive extinction level disease threat has really focused humanity, which makes sense just as a plot device. It's a, uh, it's a good bit of drama to put in there. So yeah, everything about the world building is great. Everything about the writing is fantastic. I mean, just like I said, there's some sloppiness, Top notch. but so, Oh God, all of the character stuff, all of the JK Simmons stuff, him and his wife is so rough. I, so, I think the other thing is, it, I would not qualify it as sloppiness. I think this show is they, too tight to be sloppy. Okay, well, we'll see. We'll see how much of the stuff I was complaining in the, the action scenes is sloppy. Although, I mean, seriously, you're the sitting in really an good. unlocked car. Come on. You're sitting in an unlocked car when you're trying to catch a murderer. And you yeah. have zero backup? No, I mean, come on. Sort yourselves out, guys. <laughs> How are you so bad? Like, at this? <laughs> you're not you're not even that aware of security protocols, and and <laughs> you're just like, yeah, dude, lock your car. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, even if even I am noticing this stuff, come on, there's something wrong from a writing standpoint. But honestly, I think I'm willing to call that just necessary sloppiness because they had to get the characters for the characters' emotional journey. You needed the murderer to meet her, have a chance to be alone with her other self. Yeah. Right? And so I just, I'm willing to accept some questionable plot writing to get us there. But I do acknowledge that it was questionable plot. Uh, That being said, it's a very powerful set of scenes with her and her other self. Well, and you find out that, well, she was kind of a murderer already. Well, what's interesting is... She's kind of a, she blames that we are shown the, the situation in which her father died. Right. And realistically speaking, 
There is nothing she could have done to save her father. But because she didn't try, she considers herself a murderer. Because she was alone. Her father fall it drunkenly falls onto a train uh, tra- train tracks. 45 seconds later, he is run over by a train. She was alone in that on in that train station, busking for pennies with her beautiful violin playing. Yep. If she had gone to the stairs and run up the stairs and looked for an adult to help, even if she had done that. There is nothing she could have done in 45 seconds to save his life. He was going to die no matter what because he's a drunken ass. But the Mm -hmm. fact that she didn't try means she's a monster, is why she thinks she's a monster. Yeah, in both realities. In both realities, yeah. And even though the split happened before she was born, um, the split did not, had not massively affected things until the past, I think, 20 years. Yeah. We don't have an exact date on the pandemic, but given her age and the fact that she had identical life with the other her, we have to assume, you know, the pandemic is a relatively last 20, 15, 20 years thing. I would have to say that Maybe it longer. depends on her age. Yeah, it's hard to tell know. how old she's supposed to be, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, she's also kind of weirdly androgynous when she yeah. has her shirt on. Yeah. Yeah. No, she does the short hair, and she uh, she does, has the short hair, and she's very, she does have an androgynous quality. Uh, so it is really tough to say. But let's say she's, I mean, let's say she's supposed to be 30 or 32 or something like that. Yeah. Then she would have been born around the time of the split. And she seems to have had, at least until age 10, a completely parallel, the exact same thing happened to both of them life as her alt. So I think it's fair to say that, uh, that you know, whenever the pandemic happened, it probably happened within the past 20 years. Although this show is just, I mean, it's the kind of show that is just full of these mysteries that invites you to check in with it. And I'm sure, I'm sure they're going to reveal everything as we go. Although I assume that they're planning on a few seasons of this because, oof. Oh, it's so Again, good. One of the strongest pilots I've seen in years. Yeah, it's so good. It's so, uh... It's such good, uh, such really just stellar spy stuff. Uh, and Stephen Ray is in there as the guy who someone, uh, the guy who uh, is another higher up at the agency that J.K. Simmons works for. But he's got his own little fiefdom. And Wait, which guy is this? Stephen Ray, who, uh, Pope. Pope. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who someone has told, uh, what do you call it? Uh, someone has convinced um, his his wife that, uh, what do you call it, that Pope was behind all of this. Yeah. And then murdered her the second she got back from telling J.K. Simmons Pope was behind all of this. Which is, I think, all the reason we need to believe that Pope is not behind all of this. Yeah. Man, they killed her off fast, though. I was not Oh, we still don't that. know if she's dead or she's gonna end up in a coma she like might her just, counterpart. Yeah, I mean, well, no, um, what they've done, they've either killed her or she was already on thin ice for her alcohol problem. Yeah. And they've they've either killed her or overdosed her so she won't be t- taken seriously and will be kicked out of the organization. Like, these are the two options of what happened there. But either way, that's one hell of an episode. And weirdly... I kind of hope they did kill her off just because that would be such a daring thing to do. And so few shows are willing to be that daring. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like they don't have a backup her who can come out of her coma. They do. Yeah. Uh, But no, I mean, we'll we'll wait until Sunday and we'll find out what they're doing. (laughs) I am not not so desperate to find out that I need to like... Look for spoilers online from people who. Well, no, the, the fourth uh, the fourth episode comes out on Saturday, so. Yeah, so I don't have to wait very long. For <laughs> yeah, I'm just very excited to see where this goes next. You know, I, like I tend to, you know me, I tend to binge shows. I will wait until a show is over, and I'll just watch the whole show, uh, episode by episode, and just get it all done in about four hours. And I'll be like, "Yep, that was totally worth doing." Whereas this. I'm psyched to wait every single week and get there every single week the second it happens. So yeah, I'm uh, I am all on board for Counterpart, which oof, 
just the kind of amazing showcase J.K. Simmons has always needed, you know, and yeah. he's finally getting it. So that, um, yeah, yeah. Back to the expanse. Of course, there is a lot of foreshadowing. A lot. Really? So I've got to pay very close attention. Um. Yes, the pilot is particularly rife with it. Okay. Um. I did love everyone's performance, and Thomas Jane just makes a wonderful corrupt cop. Oh, he's so good. And oh, wait, just... I think I figured out how to deal with the graffiti. What's that? Oh my god. Um, if you go to the vending machine... Yeah? You can get a vial of acid, and you smash the vial of acid against the graffiti. Okay. Well, I'm just steadily, straight up just dropping everything from the first floor down. No, I noticed that, and I appreciate that, and I've been moving largely moving stuff to the uh, bin. But the problem is, and this is, uh, I think, continuing to be a problem with the game, mm -hmm. that they really need to fix this for part two or whatever the upgrade is, you can't throw the vials of acid. Yeah. You can pick them up, you can drop them, but you can't throw them. Oh, wait, no. Here, let me try something. If I push myself up against the wall and drop it, it smashes on the wall and that takes care of it. But that is what I have to do to deal with this graffiti. Hold on. Okay. I did find... There was some guns around here. Not that one. What? Do you mean the blue ones? Yeah. I may have destroyed all of those. Oh, man. I couldn't pick them up. I picked them up and they didn't do anything. So you're maybe those you were needed acid to load launchers. them with acid? Well, yeah, now I realize that, obviously. <laughs> maybe there's one still upstairs, but probably not. I probably nixoned us by uh, getting that yep. done. But yeah, so there's a huge amount of foreshadowing in the expanse, you were saying. Yep. Uh, so maybe I go rewatch that first episode before I move on? It's going to be a while till you see the uh, results. Like I'll... Oh, okay. It's going to be like, like two seasons from... Oh my god, that kind of foreshadowing. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, so now I've got two shows I need to watch. We're going to be back here checking in. Uh, on our next episode, we're going to be back here. I'm going to have watched a, another episode of The Expanse. And Counterpart. And, oh, well, no, yeah, and I'll be caught up in Counterpart as well. But we might have another TV show to check in on. What I'm saying is... Uh, yeah, no, our, we are, it's going to be a triple threat, I think, next time. Because we're going to deal with star trek venereal disease and uh yeah check-ins with the uh, count the new episode of counterpart and that yeah because uh, star trek finally ends this weekend right oh well, thank god <laughs> wow uh you know what we'll get there <laughs> we'll discuss this next week because there's gonna we'll be a lot of yelling and drinking and crying eh, probably that sounds that sounds pretty accurate uh, so yeah, all you have to do is put the uh, acid on, and once you've put the acid on, you can use the um, mop to deal with it. Oh. And you also have to pick up the acid with the mop. So yeah, it's uh, this this new mechanic works perfectly well. So way to go, developers. You have impressed me yet again with your beautiful game about cleaning up after uh, Rex. Okay, so um, we're going to uh, we're going to start signing off now. Do you have a quiz ready? It Ooh. can be about the expanse. It can be about the counterpart. How how, how challenging of an expanse question? Uh, well, I think it should be for people who have just watched the pilot. Okay. <laughs> so I don't think you should go deep into lore the way you want to, because I know you've read everything. I have literally read every piece of fiction. Okay. Related to the expanse. <laughs> all right. See, as I suspected, all the yes. novellas, all the short stories, just everything. Just everything. All right. Uh, but yeah, something something not too hard for this our first expanse quiz, and then we can uh, we can pick it up going forward. Okay. Hmm. You got something? You got something on tap? Yep. What was all the right. name of Juliet Mao's ship? Oh, see, that's going to be a good one. I could go back and check. Yeah, yes, and but you'll get it wrong. It. I guarantee you. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, I can't wait to find out. I can't wait to find out the answer to this quiz. All right. So uh, if you want to answer that quiz, just put drop your answer in the comments section below the video. Uh, put that down there and be sure to put in the time code for where in this video the quiz was. So I can check your answer against the question. 
which is important to be able to do for obvious reasons. Uh, so yeah, be sure to do that, and then we will uh, we will find out. You know who's uh, who knows more about the. Uh, <laughs> we'll find out who knows more about the expanse. Me or you, the person watching this. Probably you, because again, <laughs> I just got started. Uh, no, but it's it's fantastic. I can't wait to see what's next. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching The Expanse. So next time we'll be back here talking about Star Trek. We'll be talking about the new episode. Uh, one more episode of The Expanse. We're going to be talking about the new episode of Counterpart. So expect spoilers every week from here on in. Yes. Uh, for for uh, we're, we're not going to restrict ourselves at all except to tell you, you got to watch The Expanse and you've absolutely got to watch Counterpart. Yes. Whew, counterpart's fantastic. All right, so uh, do you have anything you want to tell people to go find, or is that just me? Hmm. I, uh, <laughs> both of the things I wanted people to go and find are already on the show. Okay, so there <laughs> you go. Uh, for me, you know, daily streams from Big Fish Games, plenty of other content. Uh, I just uh, got a new copy of Shadow of the Colossus, uh, which just came out on PS4 and is totally worth buying again. Because it's Shadow of the Colossus. And Shadow of the Colossus is in many ways the best video game. It might not be Manhunt. It might not even be uh, Deadly Premonition. But it is in many ways the best video game. I firmly disagree. <laughs> that one <laughs> came out in 1995. Which one's the best video game? Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Chrono Trigger is amazing. I'm not going to claim Chrono Trigger isn't amazing. But I don't know. Uh... I, I've played Chrono Trigger a couple of times, and I do not recall a scene where I uh, smashed a, uh, where I, I set up next to a, a derelict plane, which had an RAF logo on the side, and then used that as a, a target to aim the parts of a white supremacist's head as I smashed his head apart with a baseball bat. Okay, that is pretty cool. It I is. will lie. You actually, uh, <laughs> it's a fun little mini game you can play yourself. You like, how close to the center of that target can I get this white supremacist's head? And you know what? I did pretty well. Yeah, we we did a lot of when I was doing my playthrough of the game. We did a lot of uh, how high can we make pieces? Because um, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say about Manhunt today because Manhunt is disgusting, and I get that. Uh, so you, we would do this thing where it's like, okay. As you smash heads apart with a baseball bat in um, Manhunt's signature kill, which is you knock a guy to his knees, you wind up, and you smash his head apart with a baseball bat, um, the actual pieces fly off and they can hit walls and leave bloodstains. And so what we would do is try and find the right location and right distance from the wall to get to get the maximum possible height on blood sp and brain splatters hitting the wall. And the very fact that I'm describing a video game like this, I think should be pretty troubling. But yes, it's it should be a little bit of a cause for alarm, even. I, I mean, it is. It's it's an alarming game, and it's alarming that I love the game. But I do love the game. All right. So we'll see you back here in a week and a bit for a discussion of the second half of Star Trek Discovery uh, with some check-ins on some other shows we're watching. Uh, but until then, au revoir. Keep it real, folks. There you go. Oh.